Hi. I'm here with Viola. Hi. She does classics at New College. And we thought we'd have a little chat about what our subjects are and what our workload is because they're not subjects that you learn in school. So Viola has a blog and I was reading it the other day and I found it really interesting because I was reading your post that's called like my UCAS story and I read it and you did A-levels in maths, further maths, physics and chemistry, yes? Yes, and classical civilization. <laughs> and classical civilization. That was really interesting to me because I did only STEM subjects at A-level and I never considered doing a humanity. So maybe do you want to talk about how you came to that decision? Yeah, so um, I thought that I was going to apply for physical chemistry or chemical physics or natural sciences. Um, when I was choosing my A-levels, obviously, <laughs> maths, third maths, physics, chemistry. Um, and then I chose classics because I really enjoyed doing Latin GCSE, but that was kind of like an A-level that, it was the A-level that I knew I'd enjoy rather than like one, like it would just be what, an extra one on the side that I'd enjoy um, yeah. rather than one that I knew I would pursue. Yeah. Um, and then I just really enjoyed it so much. And also, um, I went when I went to three summer schools in the summer of year 12 to 13. Yeah. Um, I came to Oxford, the unique summer school for classics, and that's actually what made me change my mind um, oh, because I enjoyed it so much. So cool. um, but obviously, as you said, at every other university other than Oxford, I did apply for a combined course of classics with science. So it was only at Oxford that I applied for straight classics. That's cool, though. Also, what is classics? What is classics? It's not a subject that people always know about. Yeah, so classics is the study of the ancient Roman and Greek civilizations, which sounds really weird <laughs> to a lot of people. Um, so I study Latin and I will pick up ancient Greek in third year. And then I just study the history, literature and philosophy around that. Although the classics course here, you can do modern philosophy, which is quite good. Um, That's pretty cool. Yeah. So you can learn classics from scratch with no like prior knowledge of yeah. Latin or... So Oxford's course is really good. There's five different courses. Um, I'm on course two, which means I don't have either Latin or Greek A-level. So my first two terms are dedicated to learning Latin intensively and becoming um, up to A-level standard, basically. Which is pretty cool. See, because I um, only ever did STEM A-level, so I did, I did A-levels in maths, math, maths, physics, computing. Um, and I never considered applying for a humanity at Oxford. But now that I've come to Oxford, I've met like quite a few people who are doing subjects like PPE who only did um, STEM subjects at A-level, which is really interesting for me. I don't regret my choice of engineering, <laughs> but I never ever considered doing a subject that wasn't maths, physics, engineering. <laughs> No, it was really, really strange because I remember um, I'd just come off an Eton summer school for physics and chemistry and I was telling my mum how I really Eton enjoyed summer that. <laughs> yes, Eton summer school for state school people's only. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and then the week after I went to Oxford to Unique and I remember I texted my mum and I just said, Mum, I think I want to apply for classics. And even now she always messages me to make sure that I don't regret making the decision because it's yeah. such a snap decision that yeah. she's worried that I might decide that I don't enjoy the subject because it was literally, she always thought I'd apply for science. I do engineering, which means my weekly timetable is probably a bit more full than yours perhaps, although you do probably spend quite a lot of time learning Latin. Yeah, so my course generally is different from other art subjects at the moment just because I have to do intensive Latin so I have yeah, yeah. one hour class every morning at 9am <laughs> um, to do Latin whereas other humanities subjects they don't have that or even the other classicists don't have that um, if they have A-levels yeah. so it's different in that sense um, that I have extra Latin classes Cause but it's still I think it's still less full than yours because you have lab times right? yeah so my average week is lectures twice a day generally then I'll have tutorials twice a week, which are an hour. Lectures are two an hour as well. And then once a week, I also have labs. Um, which are how long? They pretty much take up your entire day because you'll have lectures in the morning, then you'll go straight to labs, and then labs, you'll probably come out of labs about 5 p.m. and by then you're like exhausted. Yeah. So, uh, so you're like a whole, almost a whole day of your week is just taken over by just contact time that you have to do. Um, and yeah, so a lot of people in who do art subjects, maybe not you because you're learning a language, um, but they just, 
just have quite a lot of spare time, uh, which they can use as they will to do write essays. I, do you write essays? Oh. Yeah, so last time I didn't write essays and last time I had a lot of free time. Yeah. So last time I had what, my one hour class in the mornings, I had three lectures um, in the whole week and then I had one language tutorial. So I did have a lot of free time last term and <laughs> I mean I probably should have spent more time working but yeah. um, because this term I now have to do the weekly essay, I do, yeah I do still have quite a lot of free time so my title's up there, but I have, yes yeah, so I have my one hour class in the morning, yeah. I only have one lecture this ter this week, so this term every week, which is one hour, mm. and then I have two tutorials a week which are an hour each, um, and then one reading club, one reading class and one revision class in college. Mm. But essentially my Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays I'm pretty much free after my language class and lecture. Um, and yeah, that's mainly spent doing yeah. essays, or re doing the reading for your essay and then for me preparing all my translations. So uh, Some days for me are even quite free, which surprised me I think. I don't know why, I'm just so not used to not having my time filled and having to fill it myself. Um, so some days I'll just have two lectures in the morning and then I'm free for the day. Yeah, we try it. Go we to should the library, work, but <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how much work do you think you do on average day, or does it really vary? Okay, so it really, <laughs> really varies. So uh, my deadlines are Monday and Wednesday. Monday I have to do after I have prepared at least a hundred lines of one book from the Aeneid, and then Wednesday morning is my essay deadline. Yeah. So generally, I will do my translation for Monday on the weekend which I haven't done yet, because it's, it's Saturday today. Okay, yeah, so tomorrow I'll spend all day probably finishing my translation, which I should have started earlier on in the week. And then all of, and then I'll do also, so the weekend I'll do my reading and I'll do the translation work. Monday evening, after I've had the class and everything, I'll start planning my essay. Tuesday the whole day I genuinely frantically panic and write the entire essay yeah. <laughs> in the day. Um, and then Wednesday morning, once the tutorial's done, I should then start my next round of work, but I basically just don't do any work Wednesday, Thursday, and most of Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. I'm sure that's not quite true. <laughs> no. Uh, well, this week I didn't do any work on Wednesday and Thursday, but uh, yesterday I did do a lot of work. It's quite true, so because um, you have, say, deadlines, so I have, like, tutorial sheets to hand in twice a week, you can get into the habit of doing your cheat sheets just in the day, in the, the day, one, day, one before day before your tutorial and yeah. just spending hours and hours and hours in the library and I think hating it yourself. I on <laughs> the type of students, so there are some students who like to yeah. do a bit every day yeah. and then there are people like me who leave it till the last minute because you know it's going to have to get done anyway. Yeah. Um, that's why, so for example, I, I do try and do some work on the Wednesday and Thursday, so usually the Wednesday when my essay is due, I just give myself the day off. I'll do like yeah. a little bit of like, I'll do my Latin homework for the classes, but I won't do any major translation or major, like I won't start the next essay yeah. on the day that I've already just submitted my essay. So I usually chill out on the Wednesday. Thursday, I generally don't do as much work either because I've just spent, you know, the weekend and Monday and Tuesday frantically doing all this work. And then Thursday and Friday though, I do try and start doing a de kind of a decent amount of work. And then because the weekend, it will just start again where I do a lot of work. I think it just depends on person how they yeah. decide to manage their time. Yeah. I mean, I could I could break it down and do a bit every day and then not do less on the weekend, but it just works out that I end up doing a lot yeah. on the weekend. I think the thing about Oxford is it forces you to, to do a lot of work no matter how much you organise your time. So you can you have to do quite a lot of work each week. You can't get away with uh, not doing so. So you do spend still quite a lot of time working, I think. A lot of time working, yeah, <laughs> because generally, I mean, I say I don't do a lot of work in the day, but it's generally because you're in your room non-stop from the moment you wake up, like 10 a.m., 9 a.m., you'll start working, and then you just, on the days where it has to be work, I won't, yeah. you won't leave your room until it's done at like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. Mm. So you do work so many hours into the night, and most yeah. of the time, for me at least, I do end up working a lot into the night, late night, so I think I'm just a I'm not a late night person, interestingly. I'm, That's quite, I'm trying to become a morning person. See, obviously, I quite I go out, you know, clubbing sometimes. But I, I'm very much a person that once it's got past a certain time in the evening, will just stop working. That's good though. That, and I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm it's not going to be productive. I'm going to go to bed, and then I'll set my alarm at like six a.m. That's good though. I, I get don't... up and then I'll do it. And even if that's the day of my tutorial, and I've got up really early to do it in the morning before my tutorial. And I know that that feels not that feels um, not so good for some people because they want to finish it the day before. Mm, yeah. For me, 
I just work better in the mornings than at the night time. Yeah, I think Oxford especially helps you realise how you as a person work the best and how yeah, you can get stuff definitely. done. So you learn more about you when you're working. Um, I really like, so my favourite place to study is at the very top of the engineering building, which is eight floors. And there's a study area and it's beautiful. Uh, so it's got the best view of Oxford and That's it's a really great nice. place to study. So I'll, I'll go up there early in the morning sometimes, watch watch the sun come up That's over so Oxford. Nice. What time does it open? Uh, so, well, I, when I say watch the sun come up over Oxford, I probably only ever get there about maybe 8 a.m. earliest. Uh, but like, our library only opens at 9 a.m. Really? Ours, yeah. tw- ours, ours is 24 yeah, hours. That's your one downside to you, you know? It's not 24 <laughs> hour library. He's a very nice college, though. So, thank you for joining me in this little chat. It's been, it's been <laughs> it's good. It's fine, we're sitting in my room. <laughs> this she is came to me. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, and yeah, I Viola makes videos as well. I They're very weekly. good. She vlogs weekly about also life. I would definitely recommend them if you like this channel and you're interested in fashion. And we're, you'll me. probably see Rowan on my channel at some point because we're going to do a formal swap. And I'm going to her bot tonight as well. So yeah. that footage will be on my YouTube channel. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, okay, cool. thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.